Welcome to Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S. Financing Healthcare Part 2. This is Lecture B. The component Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S. is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and how services are delivered in the U.S. It covers public policy, relevant organizations and their interrelationships, professional roles, legal and regulatory issues, and payment systems. It also addresses health reform initiatives in the U.S. The learning objectives for Financing Healthcare Part 2 are to describe the revenue cycle and the billing process undertaken by different healthcare enterprises, explain the billing and coding processes and standard code sets used in the claims process, identify different fee-for-service and episode-of-care reimbursement methodologies used by insurers and healthcare organizations in the claims process, review factors responsible for escalating healthcare expenditures in the U.S., and discuss methods of controlling rising medical costs. This lecture completes the discussion of the revenue cycle by explaining claim submission. It also examines the various methodologies by which payers reimburse providers. Payment requests can be submitted to an insurance payer either on paper or electronically. Payers enter into contracts with organizations and providers to manage the amounts reimbursed for healthcare services. Payers review and adjust submitted claims and pay the balance to the provider. The methodology used to adjust the claim involves either a fee for service approach or episode of care method which is a function of the provider-payer contract. After coding, a claim is prepared for submission to a third-party payer for reimbursement using a standard format. Included on a claim are demographic and insurance information, diagnosis codes, procedure codes with time intervals, charges, and practice and provider unique identifiers. Claims may be submitted on paper or electronically. The paper forms are called the CMS Form 1500 and CMS Form 1450 for physicians and institutions, respectively. Information submitted via an 837 transaction through an Electronic Data Interchange, or EDI, electronically transmits the same information found on a paper claim. The American National Standards Institute, or ANSI, oversees the development of standards for products, services, processes, systems, and personnel in the U.S. The Accredited Standards Committee X-12, or ASC X-12, chartered by ANSI, develops EDI standards. This slide lists some of the ASC X-12-specific HIPAA EDI transaction sets used to transmit information and claims electronically for eligibility status, claim submission, claim status, claim remittance, and referral certification and authorization. After processing by an examiner or adjuster at the payer, reimbursement is sent to the provider. In most cases, reimbursement is less than the amount billed due to co-payments, co-insurance, or contractual arrangements. While most providers expect reductions in the amount billed, challenges occur when payment is less than anticipated since this results in lower than expected revenue. There are few industries or other types of insurance where this occurs. After receiving payment from the payer, a final bill is prepared for settlement with the patient. In most cases, this represents coinsurance amounts. The payment a provider receives from a third-party payer depends on the methodology applied to a specific claim. After submission to the payer, a medical claims examiner or adjuster processes it according to the insurance plan's guidelines and the terms of the policy. Third-party payers use different methodologies to determine the amount to pay for a specific claim. Payments for claims are based on one of two methodologies fee-for-service, or episode of care, both of which describe a unit of payment. Fee-for-service refers to separate payments made for each individual service provided, whereas episode of care refers to one payment for all care provided during an illness or time frame. For example, 
A patient with a cough and fever is examined and treated at an urgent care center. The center provides three services for this patient, the doctor's professional fees, an x-ray, and a blood test. With fee-for-service reimbursement, the provider receives payment for each of the three services individually. With episode of care payment, the center receives one payment for all three services, the same predetermined amount whether one, two, or all three of the services are performed. This single fee for all services is negotiated by the provider with the payer in advance as part of managed care arrangements. There are two types of fee-for-service payments, traditional retrospective and self-pay. There are three types of episode of care or EOC payments, capitation, prospective payment, and global payment. Managed care, when referring to reimbursement, may involve either fee-for-service or episode of care methodology. A traditional retrospective fee-for-service payment refers to the payment by third-party payers, usually under a commercial or indemnity plan, after services have been provided. Payments are based upon a fee schedule developed from historical claim data using the average of the usual, customary, and reasonable charges that have been submitted by providers over time. A fee schedule is the third-party payer equivalent of the provider's charge description master. It is a list of allowable services and procedures and the amounts payable for each. Some medical services may not be allowable or payable, for example, cosmetic plastic surgery. Another type of retrospective fee-for-service payment is the resource-based relative value scale, or RBRVS, used by Medicare and other third-party payers. Payments are based on the cost of services in terms of effort, overhead, and malpractice insurance. The second form of fee-for-service payment, self-pay, is when patients pay directly for the services they receive. For true self-pay patients, providers may offer a discount. Those without insurance are considered a subset of self-pay since they are responsible for all expenses. One self-pay scheme involves large employers who self-insure under the Employee Retirement Income Securities Act, or ERISA. With ERISA, the employer agrees to pay for an employee's medical care. The employer assumes all the risk for the cost of care and administers and pays for all of an employee's health care costs, or in some cases, employees may share some of the costs with the employer. This scheme usually involves a third-party administrator, which may be an insurance company, to assist in processing employee claims. Covered individuals may appear to have commercial insurance. As a reimbursement methodology, self-pay costs tend to be higher for services provided than other methodologies. Moving now from the fee-for-service payment methodology to the episode of care or ECO methodology, we encounter capitation. Capitation payments are typically paid by health maintenance organizations, or HMOs. The provider, or healthcare organization, receives the same amount from the third-party payer per length of time, usually a month, for the care provided at the healthcare organization to all of its members. Regardless of the number of patients enrolled in the plan who require care, the frequency of their visits, or the severity of an illness, the provider receives a preset amount per enrolled patient each month. The term used to describe this approach to payment is per member per month, or PMPM. The advantage of this method of payment for the payer is that the third-party payer knows the total costs in advance and places some of the risk on the provider. The advantage to the provider is a guaranteed stream of payments or income. However, the disadvantage is that the provider must assume the risk of loss should the cost of care exceed the payments received. To illustrate this, consider a group practice that enters into an agreement with a payer to receive $25 per member per month. For every 100 members assigned to the practice, the provider receives $2,500 per month even if none of the member patients are seen. 
If during a single month the cost of care for all 100 members is actually $3,500, then the group practice loses $1,000 that month and must absorb the expense of the additional cost of care. The payer makes no additional payments to the provider. The provider must balance provision of care with the costs. Another type of episode of care methodology is the prospective payment method in which payers establish reimbursement rates in advance for packages of healthcare services for specific problems. The rates are established based on average resource use for the level of care and the services provided. Individual patients may require different levels of resources that correspond to different costs. However, the total resource use should average out over time. There are two prospective payment types. The first is per diem payment, in which a fixed amount is paid for each day of hospitalization, where the day represents the episode of care. The second type of prospective payment is case-based payment, where the same amount is paid regardless of the length of stay and total resource use. For example, two patients with pneumonia are admitted to the hospital on the same day. The first requires five days of hospitalization and the second requires nine days of hospitalization. With per diem payments, the hospital receives five times the per diem payment for the first patient and nine times the per diem rate for the second patient. Under case-based payment, the organization receives the same amount for both patients, even though one required additional days of care. An example of a prospective payment system is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Diagnosis Related Group System, or DRG, used for payment to hospitals for inpatient services provided to Medicare patients. Payments are made based upon the age, sex, diagnosis, any existing comorbidities that may affect the length of stay, the number of procedures necessary, expected complications, and discharge status. A comorbidity is the presence of two or more conditions or diseases in the same patient, which complicates the patient's hospital stay and may lead to more resource use or longer lengths of stay. The final episode of care method is global payment. Under the global payment model, the third-party payer makes one payment for an episode of care for a patient who receives care from multiple providers within a fully integrated delivery system. Finally, in managed care reimbursement, managed care organizations, or MCOs, contract with providers to limit fees. The MCO may use a fee-for-service methodology, in which payments are made according to a discounted fee schedule, or an MCO may use an episode of care reimbursement, such as a prospective or global payment. MCOs provide an incentive to patients to use resources effectively by either lowering in-network costs or by raising costs for non-network care. This concludes Lecture B of Financing Healthcare Part 2. In summary, the revenue cycle for healthcare organizations is a unique process that requires submission of medical bills or claims describing the services provided. During the preparation of claims, information about the type of medical service, the diagnosis associated with the service, and the fee for the service is gathered and coded into a claim using standardized codes. This data, along with identifying information about the patient and organization, is submitted for payment to an insurance payer, either on paper or electronically. Payers enter into contracts with organizations and providers to manage the amounts reimbursed for healthcare services. Payers review and adjust submitted claims and pay the balance to the provider. The methodology used to adjust the claim involves either a fee-for-service approach or episode-of-care method, which is a function of the provider-payer contract.